Moving on with our discussion on important species, there is one species that cannot be ignored considering its rich biodiversity just in India. I am talking about the flying squirrels of India. Now, first of all, they are not flying, by the way, guys. They don't really fly like birds. They basically glide, right? They basically glide. So here I have got a list of few of the flying squirrels of India. And when you look at all these flying squirrels, actually all of them are different, but they are found in India. They are native to India. Like here, we have got the Indian giants flying squirrel, right? Then here we have got the Indian reds flying squirrel. Then here we have got the famous Himalayan or what is known as the Kashmir's flying squirrel. Then here we have got the Mishmi Hills flying squirrel, right? And guys, remember, flying squirrels are found almost across the country. There is a flying squirrel called Travancore flying squirrel, right? It is found in the Western Ghat region of Kerala, Travancore flying squirrel. But our discussion is primarily focused at Namdafa's flying squirrel. Namdafa is a famous national park in Arunachal Pradesh and there is a flying squirrel that is endemically found in this region. That means this type of flying squirrel is not found anywhere else. By the way, when you talk about all the other flying squirrels, they all are subspecies. That means they all are basically part of the same evolutionary group. They are part of the same species group, but they happen to be having uh, certain genetic differences that make them a separate subspecies. But yes, they can still interbreed with each other. That means they are not typically different, but different enough, genetically different enough that they can be regarded as a subspecies, right? So these are various flying squirrels of India. Now, when you talk about flying squirrels in general, achha, by the way, when you look at the flying squirrels here, you can see that, like I said, that they don't, they don't fly, they glide. And because they glide, for gliding, they need a certain membrane. They need a certain membrane that helps them to glide for a longer distance. Though, so when they jump from one tree to another, they appear to be gliding from one tree to another. So this gliding of the flying squirrel is possible with the help of this skinny membrane. It's actually nothing but an extension of their skin only. It's called petegium. I'll write it here. This is called petegium. And you know what guys, this petegium, so you can see the petegium folding here, you can see the petegium folding here also, you can see the petegium very wide in all these flying squirrels. Petegium is also commonly found in bats. So when the bats are flying, they are not flying with their wings. Wings are found in birds. Mammals or, or, or organisms like bats and, and flying squirrels, they basically use a stretch membrane of their own skin called petegium. And with the help of their petegium, they are able to fly or they are able to glide. Although bats are flying, but they are gliding. Now, let's talk about some of the common features of all flying squirrels. Flying squirrels have common features. So when you talk about the flying squirrel features, they all are nocturnal mammals. Nocturnal mammals means that they are active during the night. They are active during the night guys that means during the daytime they tend to sleep and they are actively active during the night that means whatever they are involved into fetching food whatever their activities for survival include they are only active at night they are gliding not flying and guys they are typically arboreals arboreals means that they are found on trees they live on trees they don't live on land they live on trees most squirrels also that we know they all are arboreal some squirrels are ground squirrel also but most of the squirrels are also arboreal. When it comes to their dietary pattern, all flying squirrels are omnivores. Omnivores means that they feed both plants and animals. So mostly they feed on nuts. We are already aware, uh, you know, a lot of squirrels, they like nuts, fungi, and sometimes they also eat insects. And because of their, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, feeding pattern involves nuts, fungi, and insects, they are omnivores. They're also arboreal, like I just talked about. And if I talk about what is the role that they play, the important role that they play in the ecosystem, they play an important role in seed dispersal. Seed dispersal. And just think about it, guys. If they are feed, if, if they are eating on fruits, nuts, and then they are dispersing the seeds to a different area, different area of the forest or of the ecosystem, just imagine how important role they are playing in maintaining the overall forest ecosystem. So the entire forest ecosystem is maintained with the help of the seed dispersal quality of all these flying squirrels from one area to another, and that's how they maintain an important role in the nature in maintaining the forest ecosystem. 
Now let's talk about what are the unique features of Nam Dafa Flying Squirrel. But before that, let me make an announcement guys. I'm launching a course on environment and ecology. It's going to be a foundation course on environment and ecology. If you guys are aiming for the prelims for qualifying UPSC in the year 2026, then this course becomes a mandatory, you know, um, a, a, a mandatory consideration for you, for you because I'm having an experience of almost 14 years of teaching. And along with that experience, I have gained a lot of expertise in the range, in the area of environment. And when it comes to the subject of environment and ecology, I have realized that, you know, so far as, as far as I've been teaching, we have realized that I have been able to touch a lot of predictability. I've been able to cover the course in a way so that we are able to not just finish the PYQs, but also we look at enough tentative questions that one student can expect while preparing for civil services. And when it comes to this entire course, what all things are we going to offer? We are going to offer the full fledged study material of PMFIES, which is already considered to be the best study material on environment and ecology. Then we are also going to make sure that you are getting group mentorship. You are getting all the assistance that you require for preparing for civil services. And we are going to have special doubt sessions, a one to one interaction with the teacher in solving questions and making sure that our answer writing is to the best possible uh, you know, standard required for civil services. So do uh, give it a thought, try to uh, take the admissions. We are launching this course on 5th of June this year, 5th of June 2025. That is the World Environment Day. And I think if you guys join this, you will not be regretting it. And this is going to be a start of your if, of your UPSC journey. So this will give you a lot of edge if you start in the month of June itself. By the time we finish the month of by the by, by the time we reach the mid of August, we'll be able to complete the syllabus of environment. And then you can simply, uh, you know, look at all the current development that keeps happening. And you can rest assured that all the things have been covered, you'll be able to understand all the things that happen. And if essentially, it will be helpful for you while you actually appear in the prelims exam. And lastly, guys, this course is going to be a very affordable course. It is not going to be putting a lot of burden on the pocket and because our focus, our intent is to provide you the best of the possible training at, at the most affordable price. So please give it a thought, guys. Then next is let's talk about the Nam Dafa flying squirrels. Nam Dafa flying squirrel, we are, as, as we know that it is a reddish grizzled fur. So it has got a fur with white with white color on their upper part. Okay, here in this image, you can see that it has got a grizzled fur, uh, fur, uh, fur and it is mostly a red color. But when you look at it from the front, you'll see a white upper part on it on, uh, from the front, right? Then um, most of the flying squirrels are somewhat like that. The petagium is mostly orangish in color. Yes, the petagium color is mostly orangish. And when you look at its role in its ecosystem, it is the same role that it plays. The same role, it plays an important role in seed dispersal. It plays an important role in maintaining the population of fungi, of ensuring that uh, harmful insects, which can be harmful for the tree ecosystem, they are also not able to harm the trees. So these are some important functions that the Namdafa flying squirrel plays in its, in its region. And remember, this particular flying squirrel is endemic to the Namdafa region of, of Arunachal Pradesh. It is an endemic species. That means it is found only in this part of the world, it is not found anywhere else. It is found only here, right? And when you look at its status in the International Union for Conservation of Nature, it is a critically endangered species. That means more than 80 to 90% of the population has already declined. It is important that we take drastic measures to recover its population. Otherwise, it will be moving on to the region of extinction. It will be very closely moving to extinction. Normally, when species are marked as critically endangered, we normally consider that in the next five to eight years, they can go extinct. So you can understand we have a very small window to respond. And in the next five to eight years, we have to make sure that Dam Dafa spying squirrels, they are recovered. When it comes to their, their protection given in the Wildlife Protection Act, so as per the 1972 Wildlife Protection Act, they have been kept under Schedule 2. Schedule 2 means that they are protected, but the absolute protection is not being given. But guys, in the year 2022, in the year 2022, we introduced the Wildlife Protection Amendment Act. Wildlife Protection Amendment Act. And according to this act, it has been replaced at, it has been put in Schedule 1. That means now 
Nam Dafa spying squirrel have been given absolute protection. That means if any uh, harm is put or is harm is caused to the Nam Dafa flying squirrel, maximum punishment can be given to the offenders. So guys, this much of information about Nam Dafa flying squirrel should be enough for the UPSC exams. We'll be continuing with some more species. All the best.